Hello everybody, my name is Wiggle and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. We are doing a tutorial today because I get some comments, I get some people that need a bit of help. I, you know, I mean, everyone needs help from time to time, but you know, people are saying, Wiggle, when are you going to do you know, a mission to Mun because I literally can't get back. Well, I'm going to show you a few tips that I've learned along the way of advanced engineering and advanced rocket crafting. We, we probably won't fly most of these, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what it means to make or to try and design something that has more Delta V and advanced rocket. If you don't know what Del Delta V is, we, I'll explain that all in this video. So what we're going to do, we're going to install the Kerbal Engineering System. This is a little mod and this tells you everything that you want to know about your actual craft. There'll be a link to this in the description, so don't panic. You can get this as and when you desire. So as you can see right here, it will tell you the cost, the mass, the ISP. If you don't know what the ISP, this is your impulse. The higher this is, the more efficient your rocket is. If you want to make certain changes in velocity, then you want a higher ISP. We'll cover more about that later on. But right now, as you see, I'm on sandbox mode. We've got everything unlocked, so I can just pretty much show you a lot of things. We've got everything unlocked here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use these ones right here. The, F, the FLT-800 fuel tanks. This is the mostly used you know, fuel tank, I would say, in Kerbin. And these are my preferred choice. We can stick on so many different engines here that we so want. Now, the key thing to know about engines is if you right click an engine you will see a little bit more about it you'll see in there where it says engine right there you'll see it's ISP ASL and VAC this means that it's atmospheric will be 320 ISP and it's vacuum is 360 so this type of engine is more efficient in the vacuum in, by, by vacuum we mean space it'll gain more more thrust so if we like stick this on here well, no, let's just stick this on here the T30 as you can see right now this has a thrust to weight ratio of 3.33 has a burn time of just under one minute with delta V of 3000 meters a second now over let's just go over this from left to right so don't confuse anybody along the way over here we have the initial cost of your rocket unless you are playing career mode this will mean absolutely nothing to you this will mean how much your ship will cost to build it then you'll have your mass in kilograms I don't know why they just didn't use metric tons but whatever this is 6590 kilograms or 6.5 metric tons with an ISP of 320 because of this right here as you can see once again this is more in the vacuum it's 370 in a vacuum so you know it's the same as the but if you want we'll explain the the other little ones later on but we'll just keep this one now see if you want to get more delta v you, you want to go higher up in your atmosphere or, or orbit then what, what you do simple as that you add more fuel. By doubling the fuel we are now going at 4,011 meters a second. So let's just rewind that for a second. I'll come over here and I'll grab another one of this. We're getting just under 3,000. We're just having one little rocket. to probably get us, we won't get us to the orbit, but it'll get us quite high up. But by doubling the fuel, we haven't doubled our fuel intake because you have to you have to consider mass. Everything in this game is controlled via mass, and the more fuel you burn from these tanks, the lighter your craft will be, and therefore you will be able to gain more delta V in the long run. This is a max delta V of 7.10. I'm guessing that's when it hits the vacuum. A burn time of two minutes. So this will probably have enough to get us out 
of the atmosphere of Kerbin. So let's just go crazy. Let's just, you know, let's just alt control. Let's just alt click this and get four of them on here. Right, this is a thrust to weight ratio of 1.09 and delta V of 5,000. So as you've seen, we have literally doubled our, in our fuel consumption, our fuel again. And we haven't even gained a thousand delta V, but we have halved our thrust to weight ratio. If I wonder what's going to happen if you try and launch this with a thrust to weight ratio of just one, or just over one, well, let's find out, shall we? Uh, we will take, uh, I don't know, take any person, anyone, then then three will be fine. I'll take this out and we'll just give it a launch and you'll find out just what thrust to weight ratio is all about. You can probably have a good guess of just what it actually means. Thrust to weight ratio, if the more weight you have, the more thrust you will need to get off the surface of Kerbin. If you have less than one, then you ain't going nowhere. It's just 1.09, and as you can see, we are barely getting anywhere. As time progresses, you will see this getting faster. Right now we're doing 9 10, 11 meters a second, it's getting faster because we're, we're burning fuel, we're gaining more altitude, we're becoming lighter. This will probably, well, we'll probably burn about half of our fuel, fuel tank before we even get to a, 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 an altitude where we actually want to do any kind of maneuver to form an orbit. So, efficiency? Not really. No. Bigger? is not always better. So we're going to go back to the vehicle assembly and we're going to have more fun with this really so just wait for the game to load. It sometimes takes forever to load back into the assembly. Alright then we are back. Let's just put that back over there. We can also use use different rockets but we'll probably come into that at later a later date. Of course, you're probably thinking to yourself now, hmm, how can I get more Delta V? Well, a simple thing about this is solid booster rockets. If you are on career mode and you want something that's cheap and effective, then, del then you know, solid boosters are your friend for getting cheap Delta V. Let's put one of these little puppies back on here. What I'm going to do, we'll just press X a few times, get two of these, and look at that, we have now a Delta V of 4078. It's not great, is it really? No, that's not great at all. But, we have gained more Delta V. But what we can do is, you know, just by simply just doing this 4078 Delta V to 4087 Delta V. And we now have more thrust to weight ratio. So as you see, just manipulating the layers will give you more delta V. Having them all together, it's, it's not always the best solution. We have more thrust to weight, but we haven't increased our delta V at all. So look at this. Now we get more more delta V. But you know, ISP for these solid boosters are, are not great at all so there has to be a, be a, be a better way of course there is a better way otherwise I wouldn't be doing this obviously so what can we do well you are probably familiar with staging I mean you have to be familiar with staging right now to get to this late of the game so what we're going to do we're going to get ourselves a little a little decoupler and we have a little stack decoupler one of the probably the most easiest things in this game to get Delta V. So we can get an engine. This little one here, as you can see, this has a thrust to weight ratio of 0 0.87. If I right click on this, you can see a little bit more about it. It's got the ISP of 300, but in the vacuum it's 390, as you can see right here. So I've got 4000 Delta V if we're in the atmosphere of Kerbin, but if we go to the space we get four and a half thousand Delta V because our ISP has increased we're gaining more impulse 
So what happens if you launch with something that's below one thrust to weight ratio? I think you can pretty much guess what's going to happen here. Alright, so we'll pretty much hold shift and get our thrusters to max. And we'll hit the spacebar. And there we go. We ain't going nowhere. Maybe if we do a bit of time acceleration, we can probably, you know, get there a little bit. But as of right now, this ain't going nowhere. Because it's literally doesn't have the thrust. If we keep on burning this and burning this and burning this, then this might become light enough because we've used up the fuel to actually gain some delta V. Gain some height. But as of right now, it's not going nowhere. So unfortunately, we'll have to just pretty much go back to the vehicle assembly lab. Bigger engines get you off the ground. Smaller engines are used for orbiting space. This is what I have to stress so clearly right now. As you can see, the rocket maximums are your friends at times. If you look at the numbers, they have a 20, 320 ISP in the atmosphere, 360 in the vacuum. It's pretty much standard average thruster to have. But it doesn't mean to say it's the best. Oh no. There are other things that are awesome. Take any kind of basic jet engine. 2000 in the, in them in atmosphere. Because these can't literally get out into space because this needs air. There's no air in space, the engine will shut off. You're gonna stall. You'll become crashing back down to carbon. So this is something that you probably would would, would want. Once you get out of the atmosphere. So what we're going to do now, we are going to put, um, as I said, decouplers. So we'll keep this little rocket because this is going to be something we're going to have later on when we need to get off MUN or going to MUN and getting a little projectory going. So putting a stack in the decoupler, we can now gain more. So let's just get these the, these TL800s. I'm gonna put two more of these bad boys on here. With of course another another liquid booster. As you can see we've gained a total of 5448 meters a second delta V. All we've done literally is just add stacking decouplers. Make sure this fires off first before this does. It's really simple signs when you think about it. But you know, there are you know, more ways to do this. Oh my god, there are tons of ways we can improve on this. The advanced engines, you know, these things are monsters. But that would be at a more of an advanced rocket later on. If you want to go to or anything like that. That's when you want to really, really dove into um, into the skippers, as, as I call them, the big boys. So then, how can we get out of here? How can we gain more delta V? Well, hmm. there is always a way. So let's grab this, put this over here. We'll put these two onto here. This is a very simple rocket that's, you know, it's going to do the job. But it's not going to do it as efficient as you want it. So what we're going to do, we're going to get decouplers. One, two, three, four. Put them bad boys there. And we're going to clone this right here. Without, of course, the stacking decouplers that I just put on there. So let's do that again, shall we? Go. Now then, what's happened? As you can see, we've got no delta V because, as always, Kerbin always seems to put these in wrong order. So we're going to put these up here, and we're going to add these pretty much down here. And there we go. We're now getting almost seven thousand delta V. Just with this, this little thing we have right in front of us. 
of course as time go goes on we'll gain more delta v because you know, once we get to once you get into space this will be this should be more than enough to get us to the moon easily very very easily to get to, get to the moon but then again how can we get more well then Cakewalk, I have to say. Let's put a stacking decoupler on this. Should have should have one laying around somewhere, but fly from I can't find it. Let's get a new one. And we'll get bigger fuel tanks. One, two, and three. What happens when you attach a rocket max to this bad boy? Well, we're now going to gain a thrust to weight ratio of 3.46. This means that this is going to accelerate with a blazing speed. Our ISP is 320 though on the atmosphere, but 360 within the vacuum. As you can see, we're getting more delta V within the vacuum because we'll be lighter, we'll have hardly any fuel, and our engines work better in the vacuum. So, what happens when you launch this? Let's find out, shall we? Here we are on the lander. We're going to pretty much throttle up to max. And we're going to go for it. As you can see, we're taking a blazing speed right now. Our meter second is going up ludicrously. So then, what have we learned so far? Bigger fuel, bigger rocket, more thrust to weight, to weight ratio, having more additional thrust to get us off carbon, will mean mean we'll get faster delta V. And once this stage goes, we can then launch this stage and of course gain more delta V. This will have more than enough fuel to get us to the moon easily. I can guarantee you this. So this is where we actually want to start turning and start creating our orbits. Look at that redness over there from the sun. That's really, really nice. So once we you know, pretty much get rid of this and launch that away, our delta V is still increasing. Why is my moon red for? Why is my earth red? I don't understand. What's going on? <laughs> Carbon's red today for some reason. So, yeah, as you see, we've almost gained all of the all of the all of the apparatus that we need to create a successful orbit around. Get to this about at about a hundred. We can pretty much cut all fuel, create an orbit, and then go from there to create to create, to create a, man a maneuver node to the Mun land everything like that but we're not going to do that right now so we return to the vehicle assembly lab because there are better ways to make a said rocket so this don't need that don't need that right now a couple of go away what I'm going to show you right now is something we all have done you probably are not aware of it but we have done it and this is something that is called asparagus staging. I've never heard of this term being used at all. I prefer to call it onion staging because that's pretty much what it really is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my decoupler. I'm going to get four of them. I'm then going to get more FL fuel and we're going to put this here copy this put this down here with of course more little engines and as you can see we now have 7000 delta V this is not a bad design for a rocket this will do almost the same as what these big fuel tanks did with the massive, you know, you know Roku Max, you know, 
Rocco Max engine previously did. So if you don't have these massive things unlocked, there are there are alternatives. But one thing we can do to make this more better, let me just um put this on it to stop the game from messing around. There we go. Right, that way we always have a layer. As long as we keep this over one thrust to weight ratio, we can have some fun. Put this down here. We're going to gain less delta V because it's all weight. We don't want that. So we keep this up over there, increasing my delta V by 2,000. That's how much delta V we have gained just by simply moving one engine. 4,500 to what's it? 6,900. That is crazy. Just by literally having stacking decouplers on these things having these to get you off the surface of Kerbin and once these have gone you jettison these off to fire your main rocket but as I was saying onion staging there is something on this game if I can remember where the hell they are are called fuel lines but of course I can find them anyway there we go they move them these external fuel lines we put this onto here, and now the game somehow seems to hate me. It hasn't done anything. Literally. What's going on there? But anyway, this will of course increase your delta V without the need of having decouplers, let's just say, because you are pretty much dumping all the fuel into the main. I'll, show, I'll try and show you what I mean. So let's um, go to the launch pad. I don't know why that isn't going on. I had a difficult time getting this HUD to work. So maybe there's still a bit of a glitchiness about it. Unless I'm just doing something wrong that I can't remember. So all five of these are going to launch at the same time on somehow my red Kerbin. Let me just zoom in, apparently I'm miles away. There we go. Alright then. This now has the same delta V potential as our massive Rocco Max. So, this will of course not be as fast, so our to weight ratio isn't as grand as Rocco Max. Well, this would get us to exactly the same delta V of 7,000. These fuel pipes. Hopefully this will work. These will all feed their fuel into this big boy right here. If we um, jettison them off, then we still have all of our fuel in our main rocket to get us out. This is one way of onion landing, it's just layers upon layers of rockets. Look at them flying everywhere up there. <laughs> they are literally gone. Oh and and there's the old there's the money over there. How about that? So anyway, that is a very, very basic onion layer or asparagus layer, whichever you prefer to call it. I don't know why my Delta V is a bit muddled up. I'll, I'll thought it should be much more better than 7,000. But we can improve this. Oh, we can improve this. We can make this ludicrous if you so wish. Let's get this and put on four more. Of course, we've now got the Delta V to 7,500. What happens if we do this though? if the game will work this way, which is exactly the same, 7,500. But as you can see, this is going to get out of, out of hand really, really quick. Yes, we're gaining more thrust to weight ratio, so everything's firing at the, at the same. What happens if we do this though? What ones are my, they're the ones that I want. If we put this onto its own, we've now increased the Delta V to 8.2 just by simply jetting off old waste. So let me just show you what I did there. These four couplers go over here 
and they'll give us delta v of 4.6. It was 7.2 a little while ago, so obviously this isn't working too great. I'm guessing because of this is here. There we go, that's probably why. 7.5 thousand delta v. But as I said, if you just literally add in one layer and jettison these boys off first, when these rockets are still going to keep, keep, keep on firing, we're going to have more delta v getting us higher out of the out of the atmosphere and into orbit but you know you could go with this forever and ever and ever and really really get some ludicrous design rockets so what we're gonna do now this is um, one thing a friend taught me we're going to get rid of these and these So much. I want to grab this as a two. Simple concept, simple, the same design. See when of course the game doesn't bug us about anyway. Got to just pretty much position up all these decouplers into their own little pods. And now look at it. Our delta V, 7,280. So we're simply having 10 little rockets here. How crazy is that? So this would fly. It would be very, very weird to see this fly around the place, but it will fly nonetheless. So, we're going to do something else. If I grab these, Put these if I can see, this would be fantastic. Put them there. And I grab two more. Put them there. Oh gee lord. There we go. Get rid of these, of course. We don't need them right now. Of course, our delta V is completely screwed around because of the decouplers. But right now, if we, if we launch them all together, we get 7,300. So what ones want to, want to be lost first? Well, let's, of course, alter our fuel lines. Let's put you onto here. You. No, 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 no. You. Come to here. And go onto here. And then this one. I'm going to feed this. And that will, of course, feed that. As you can see, we've made kind of a spiral. So what we want to do, we want to make sure we haven't messed this up and get the right decoupler. Decouple first. And then this one here. Which is that one there. Put that on its own layer as well. Decreasing our weight and getting a delta V of 8057 meters per second. That's within the atmosphere. Out of atmosphere in the orbit, of course, get more to 9,000. So, all of these rockets are going to fire together, as you can see, right here, leaving our main one last. And of all of its fuel intact. These simple little pipelines are Kerbin's gift if you want to get more delta V cheaply. It would have simply went from just having the same. Same kind, same kind of rockets, but just it's a different pattern, and with fuel lines. So this one gets jettisoned off first, as these two down here, and then when they use up all the fuel, these two will get jettisoned off, and then these will get jettisoned off, leaving all the fuel from this rock. I'll try and show you what I mean. You're probably thinking in your mind, how does that work? It, it doesn't make a sense. Doesn't make any sense any sense at all. So we're gonna launch this bad boy from the launch pad. And you'll probably say I'm not gonna use up all the fuel, otherwise we're gonna be here all goddamn day. There we go. We are off. On our red curb for, for some reason. So what I'm gonna do now, as you see, liquid. They're going down rapidly because they're actually feeding up all of these tanks here. That's our, that's our, that's our total fuel. You can see that they're 
My liquid one's almost done. And now we're now waiting for oxidizing to go. We can now launch them, launch them off. And you know, these still have all their fuel intact. Of course, if we had it when that was I had no fuel left, it wouldn't have overtook us and shot away. But that's what I mean, though. The lighter we are, the lighter we are, the more thrust away we will gain. And look, we're hardly using up much fuel as we did getting off the launch pad. Because we do we have more delta, we have more thrust to weight ratio being higher in the atmosphere. So these are probably operating at around about maybe 3.5 instead of 3.2. We're lighter mass, so therefore they're going to do more. So once these go, go off, we can then jettison these off and be left with three rockets left. I have no idea why I have a red curve before, maybe my game load up a bit, um, a bit buggy. I'll have to check that out. Now these are gone, we jettison those, those off. And look, we, we're still gaining tons more delta V. We're almost at 20,000 meters, and we still have three rockets to our name. This is onion laning. So, higher stage boosting. Is pushing the lower stages. This is what this pretty much means. So now these will burn for a very, very long time. And once these are finished burn, then we'll have all this because we're now in the vacuum of space with our red carbon. So my apparatus is almost a hundred meters already, and we haven't even done our alignment yet. We're just going for the sheer hell of it. So yes, we can probably get this to the moon and back again easily. With more, with probably fuel to spare, easily. So how are we doing now? We're getting stupid, stupid um, meters per second now. As you can see here, our jets are now probably operating at 3.7, which is their maximum because they love being in the vacuum. We're going to be getting so much delta V. It's going to be unreal. They're almost finished. This one's going to be a very, very slow, long, yet awesome burn. Because we're in the vacuum and our, and our engine is going to use up its true you know, impulse, its true ISP. We'll get rid of them. And that one, did, that one did decouple. There we go. Thank you. Ah, it's stationary this beast out, shall we, from a spin out of control. I don't know what happened there though, but this will come under control in a minute. Just gotta just, come on, come on, stop messing me about. It's slowing down, but you might, um, curb is probably giving a massive headache right about now. Right. Put that under control at last, and we're still gaining delta V. And look how much fuel we still have left. How far are we going? My god, look at that. But if I was to literally you know, put this, I could have done this as an orbit, and we could have been well on the way to the moon right about now. I'm not going to keep on doing this, otherwise, this is going to just go on and on and on. I could probably get to the moon just as as we are right now. We have so much fuel left, it's just, it's just crazy. Just from simple staging, if you stage your, your rockets correctly, you can just keep on going and going and going. Once we get more into my science episodes, you'll see me doing something similar to this to get to Eve, because what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to show you how to Put your put all your rockets into into space, dock, and then go to a planet very very far away. Or if you don't, if you're not too familiar with docking and everything, how to launch as one massive vessel to get to where you need to go. So how are we doing now? Oh my god, we are literally gone. Look at us. We're on to Kerbin Escape now. So this will probably. Where's this going to take us? We have an apparatus. We have a sun, Peripus, right now. Look, this can take us to Eve easily. 
this is how I've done this before I became a YouTuber uploader. When I became, when I first got to Eve, this is the rocket I pretty much used to get here. As you see, it still works today as it did back then. It's not going to work very well right now, but we can actually have a nice close-up view of the sun if we so wish. So let's cut our let's cut all, all of our rockets, and we'll just increase our warp speed so we can to see exactly how far ludicrous we actually get. So we need to get to Kerbin Escape, which is what we have done. Yep, bye bye Kerbin. Yep. Who needs, who needs to go to, to the moon? It's increased, it's increased to a million times speed. Getting back to Kerbin is going to be a no hope in hell. We have no fuel for that at all. We have 77 liquid fuel left. But I have not done this in a very, very long time. Look, we even went to Moho. That's how close we got. So let's just go straight out of here. And there it is. I wonder if we shouldn't crash into it, we'll just pretty much um if we keep on if we keep this going, we'll probably get a Kerbin entry sometime and we might have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin. But if this was my science, I would be coming over here, science galore, science machines, prods, everything, you you name it, and I'll be doing it. So we'll increase my my time up again and we'll just see the sun. And there he goes. Wonder how hot that'd be for our Kerbin right now. So there is our little Earth right there, or Kerbin as we call it. So if we go round again, as you know, that the further away from a planet you get, the slower your your velocity is. I see our velocity is going right down now to five thousand, and now it means we're going away from our apparatus. So we will be gaining increased velocity. Look, almost 7,000. It's going to increase to 8,000. And it's going to keep on going and going and going until we get to our Parapus. We might even get a, you know, a Kerbin entry here. I do apologize, this has been a very, very long episode. But I'm just literally stating you do not need ludicrous rockets just to get to where you want to go. So, we're, unfortunately, we're not going to have a little, um, a little. Kerbin re entry here, unless of course try and do something with our apparatus here. We could be here a while trying to do um, a maneuver note to decrease this. This will have to be a, a later episode because right now, yeah, I estimate burn is <laughs> ridiculous right now. Because we, um, we literally what what we will have to do if you ever want if you ever want to see Kerbin again, we might have to do another orbit around here, and then at a better time, kind of increase or or decrease our parapet apps around here to try and get a Kerbin re-entry or even if you want to. Increase our apparatus over here to get a curb and re entry. But anyway, that is an advanced rocket tutorial from my perspective. I don't claim to be awesome at building rockets. The rockets that I've built today, they are a few tricks that I've learned playing this game. You do, you know, of course, get to know the game quite well and you, of course it's our job as engineers to decide how you want to build your rocket. I want to do onion laying, onion you know, um, layers or asparagus staging you know the choice is yours to make you can literally just go to town and just have an absolute field day like this for example this was 12 fuel tanks and we are out of Kerbin's range and we've orbited the sun so many times. I mean, our Kerbin would be dead right now if we're doing this on career mode, on, on career mode without any food or electricity or anything like that. But I'm just simply stating the fact that you don't need 20 rockets to get the job done. If you if you have 
a decent head on your shoulders and you can outweigh the math and max with your ISP with your Delta V with the correct rockets and fuel that you're using you'll be surprised on the results that that, that you can gain my, my name is Mugler thanks so much for watching this this brief this brief tutorial and I hope I hope this gained you wonders please like comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future and as always I will see you on the next one see ya